Hi, welcome back to my series, Does the Bible Tell You So? <laughs> Today's topic, sex before marriage is a sin. I mean, does the Bible tell us that? So let's cut to the chase. No, actually it doesn't. There is nowhere in the Hebrew Bible or the Newer Testament where someone says that or where God says that. There's no place in the Bible that comes out and says, sex before marriage is a sin. So why do so many Christians, at least, believe that it does say that? That's what I'd like to address. Keep in mind, this is just three to five minutes. I can't cover everything, right? So this is a food for thought, uh, let's address some of the misunderstandings kind of a video, okay? First, there are two verses, and I mean literally two verses, that Christians like point to or defer to to back up this idea. Genesis 2.24 and 1 Corinthians 7.9, okay? I don't have time to get into everything about these two verses, so let me just briefly say this. Genesis 2.24 says, Therefore a man will leave his father and mother and join to his woman, and the two shall become one flesh. Almost every single English translation says, therefore a man will leave his father and mother and join to his wife. This is where people get the idea that you don't have sex unless you're married. Like this is pretty formative, right? And it comes from Genesis. So, you know, Genesis is an important book for both communities of faith, right? Not what it's saying. And in fact, I'd direct you to some other resources at the end of the video if you're interested in more on Genesis 2.24. 1 Corinthians 7, 9, Paul, addressing some questions that come up where they're like, it's better not to, ha not to touch women. It's better for us men not to, you know, interesting premise. But out of context, the verse that people defer to says this, but if they are not practicing self-control, they should marry, for it's better to marry than to be aflame with passion. Okay, I don't have time to like unpack all of this. So let me just give you a couple pieces here. When I was in my 20s, my very evangelical days, right, the, we read this passage as saying, all right, you've got the hots for your boyfriend or girlfriend, but you're not supposed to have sex yet. And if you just can't control yourself, then, why, then go ahead and get married. Then you can, because in marriage, you can enjoy all the passionate sex you want. That's how we read it, is passionate sex is reserved for marriage. If you can't control it, then get married. And that way you can have it. Not what Paul is saying, okay? Paul actually has a problem with passion. And cutting to the chase here, he says that marriage is a way to help you control the passion, not where you get to go indulge the passion. This is a big distinction, yeah? Okay, so Paul isn't actually trying to talk about what we're talking about when someone says sex before marriage is a sin. Paul's talking about something else, how to control yourself as a human. And this is, these are very different conversations, but there's too much to get into that well. So let me just put some other pieces on the table for you. What does the Bible say about sex before marriage? Look at the book Song of Songs. It is several different conversations between couples. They appear to be all hetero, but They've in, com in a couple of those scenarios, they've known each other pretty intimately sexually and physically, and they're talking about it poetically. Something to think about. These couples are not married, and it's in the Bible, and these couples have had sex, and there's something about love and sex and lust and physicality that's being embraced and celebrated. Worth your consideration. Also, in the Hebrew Bible in particular, we see all kinds of ways that men are allowed to have sex outside of marriage and it's not a problem and in fact within their marriage they're allowed to have sex with multiple women all under his roof the, but women are not allowed you know we could look at the law that talks about how a man can s sell his daughter into sex slavery like that's an awful scenario that I can't imagine a parent being placed in that situation. And it, and it has happened to people. And so that's got to be difficult for him. And that's, but we're not even talking about what's going on for women in these passages, right? So when you, if you're turning to this ancient collection of sacred texts, the, the worldview out of which they came is going to be embodied in it. And that is something to keep in mind. Now, when we get to the Newer Testament, we look at Paul and Jesus, because those are our good guys, right, for Christians. They're not so positive about marriage either, which makes this conversation about waiting for marriage to have sex a really tricky one, right? I have other places where I talk about what Paul and Jesus say about sex and marriage, 
but let me just leave this on the table for you. Jesus doesn't really talk about marriage ever. And the one time that he's referring to it, it's actually whether or not you can get divorced. And he wraps up the whole conversation by throwing a gauntlet for men to castrate themselves for the sake of the kingdom. I mean, that actually doesn't keep you from having sex, by the way. That just keeps you from fathering children. <laughs> so, just some food for thought, right? Next time you hear someone saying sex before marriage is a sin, or you even trot it out because of habituation or whatever, maybe pause to think about what does that line do to people? It's actually a form of control instead of helping people to have the more complex conversations about this complex thing about human beings, which is sex and sexuality, and how to have a healthy experience with it instead. One is an easy fix, the other is a more healthy, mature way of handling the topic. So just some food for thought. Next week's topic, God helps those who help themselves. Stay tuned.